Hello and welcome back. Before I go over advanced in painting and comfy UI, I wanted to mention a little bit of exciting news. I will be joining Stability AI in April 2024 as a generative media solutions engineer. As to what the role entails, it's kind of like a mashup of a technical artist, machine learning engineer, and designer. Basically, all of the work I've done on YouTube falls under that umbrella. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check out the stuff I've done in the past. In addition, if you've worked in the VFX industry at a top level such as industrial light and magic the role is very similar to a generalist that is responsible for the end-to-end -end pipeline and shot creation for a specific brief but also incorporating ai into the workflow from conversations with some art acquaintances in the field this is trending towards the norm so better pick up the ai stuff quickly so you don't get left behind Anyway, that's one of the main reasons why there haven't been any videos lately as I was interviewing for the position in addition to doing other research. I don't want to get into the entire story in this video, but I was approached by internal staff gauging my interest for several positions and had a very positive experience throughout the entire pipeline. If there's enough interest, I can make a separate video about that. Also, I haven't joined yet, so please don't ask me about stable diffusion 3 details and flow matching performance and how to train ST3 models. I'm just as in the dark about it as all of you are, and even if I did know something, I couldn't tell you anyway. Now, let's get back into the the crux of this video, which is advanced in painting and comfy UI targeted towards SDXL. However, most of the nodes do have SD 1.5 backwards compatibility, so I'm sure you can learn a lot. As for resources, I'll provide three different workflows. The first one is basic text to image or our starting point. The second one is the completed version. And the third one is the version that I currently use on a day-to-day -day basis, which has a little bit more complexity in it. That being said, what I'll be doing in this video is going from the basic text to image workflow, then building it out so that it can perform high resolution in painting with the help of the masquerade nodes. Afterwards, I'll integrate various pre processing nodes as well as the Ackley SDXL in painting patch. Then, I'll show you how to mix an IP adapter so that it can condition your high resolution in painting mask with attention masking. Along the way, I'll demonstrate how to use various quality of life nodes such as RG3 fast meter and bypasser for debugging and context switch to swap between different workflows and nodes. That was a bit of a long introduction, but finally, let's get started. Originally, this video was a smaller section in the current project that I'm working on. However, it's gotten to the point where I think it deserves its own dedicated video. What I'm going to do is start with the most basic SDXL text to image workflow, then build it out so that it covers the advanced in painting and out painting workflows that I use on a daily basis. Here we have the basic text to image workflow. Let's go ahead and generate just to see what we're working with. After a few generations, I found this output image that seems like a great candidate for an in-painting demo. Before we start manipulating this image, let's go ahead and rescale this to a size that we like. Since I'm using SDXL, the square image here is 1024 pixels wide and 1024 pixels tall. If you use the traditional method of upscaling with a 4 times model, you'll get a 4K square image. So normally that looks something like this. Upscale model loader. Most of them are 4 times models and I like using this balanced one. And then you have an upscale node. So this one image upscale with model and you plug in your model here and then your image here and then let's go ahead and preview that and there you go you have your 4k image look how clear it is however i don't like working in 4k during the exploration phase of a concept the reason being is that when you start painting on this in Photoshop or Krita or whatever you're using, it gets pretty heavy, especially if you're doing a la prima painting, which is what I do. So I like to work with 2K usually. Since we have a 4K image here already, all we have to do is just divide by 2 to get a 2K image. To downscale the image, the node that you want is this image resize node. So type in image space resize like that. And here you can connect the image in question. So this is our 4K image. And then you have these resize width and resize height inputs. I feel like they don't do anything because I've tried testing them out and only this rescale factor really changes what I want. So go ahead and preview this and run that. This should give us a 2K image. 
but it's hard to tell. So how do we know what the dimensions of this are? If you want to determine the image size of any image in Comfy UI, we have a set of nodes that can help us. The first one is called get image size, this one, lowercase, and it's from this Durfu Comfy UI modded nodes. Plug in your image. The first integer is the width and the second integer is the height. So once you have that, create an int to number like that into int. And then now number, we want to convert that to a string. So number to text like that. So you have a string right here, number to number, and then string, where does this go? We have another node that can output things here called show text. So display that. Make sure you have all these nodes installed, Python, Ghost, WAS, Node Suite, etc., etc. I will share the workflow so you guys can check out and update all the dependencies that you don't have. So put that in. Now we want the same set here for the height. Put that there as well. Before we run, I want you to notice down here, as I mentioned before, when you're doing the image resize, resize width and resize height have no impact whatsoever. So remember, this should be a 2K image, not whatever dimensions are in here. I have no idea what these are for. So Q prompt. It's done processing. Let's head over here. 2048 and 2048. What a coincidence. Not these values here. And if you're doubting whether this works for non-square images, well, the proof is in the pudding. Why don't we try it out? So let me bring over another image. This is very clearly not a square image. Plug that in and Q prompt. This time we have the width at 1536 and the height at 640. Does that track for you? It does for me. Okay, great. Now that we have our downscale 2K image, let's bring it back into our original in painting workflow. I'm back in the text to image workflow. You can see nothing has changed. All I have done is just swapped out the 1K image for the upscale 2K image. It's a little bit clearer, but not that clear. And let's go ahead and just bring over the nodes we created before to get the image size. This is pretty invaluable to debug what you're doing. So put that down there. You can even put it on the side if you want it to be a kind of a utility function or a set. Now, normally, how do we in paint? If you want to go the most naive, the most bare bones, right click on your image, click on open in mask editor and paint black where you want to change it. So if I paint black here, I want to change the head and then save it to your node. However, I want to showcase some other nodes that you may find useful or may even prefer instead. The first one is called Preview Bridge. So click on that. It's from the Impact Pack. So why would you prefer to use this Preview Bridge instead of just using a load image and then painting the mask here? Well, there are times when you do image operations on an image and you don't have this mask output on an image. Let me demonstrate. For example, let's go ahead and bring in an image crop node like that. Plug that into image and notice how here we don't have an output for the mask. There's no green output. What do we do? First of all, let's go ahead and create a rudimentary crop like so 768 by 768 and then put this into the preview bridge. This functions much the same as the normal preview image like that. Let's hook that up as well so we can compare. The cropping is done and you can see that it's starting from the top left over here and cutting out the top left corner. We can change this by manipulating these values. So let's just try to get a little bit more over there. Not perfect, but you get the idea. So if we want to go up decrease, this way we get a close up or a more zoomed in view of the face. This will become important in a little bit, but I want to finish explaining some of these extra masking tools or painting tools to you. See, if you use preview image, you have no mask output, but if you use this preview bridge, you can go from an image that doesn't have a mask output to a new image, and then you can right click here and still do a open in mask editor, or you can do a open in SAM detector and click on here to detect the face. You have a plethora of ways to do your selection. Besides the preview bridge from impact pack and the vanilla method, you have one more tool called the canvas tab. This, this is the GitHub repository for canvas tab by lurk. These are the hotkeys for it. I'll show you how to use it in a second. If you need any more documentation, this is the place to go. 
So head back here to use canvas tab. We have to click on the edit here. Once we're in here, you can go ahead and click on these red buttons to get rid of image A and image B. These are 512 square pixel images that are the default. And we don't need that because we're going to create a new image for our specially made down sample 2K image middle mouse button to zoom in and out on scroll, copy and paste your image over here. There it is. If we want to paint a mask, go over to mask, click on that. You can see that the current color is dark purple, change that to black, raise the opacity. And if you want to change brush size, just drag up here. So let's paint the face like that. And if we go back to comfy UI, you will notice that nothing's happening. We don't see anything. The issue is that in here, you have to click on this green button over here, click on that. And then once you go back here, it's available. Whichever one has the green indicator flashing is the layer that will be sent over. If we do a preview image, you can see the image here. If we want to visualize our green mask, make sure we convert it to an image first. So double click, mask to image, that, drag that down. We want the color to be white and then preview image here. Pull that over, Q prompt again. What do we get? So we have the white here indicating the black mask that we painted in. And the cool thing about canvas tab is that even if your opacity is at 100% inside the painter here, you can see the opacity is at 100%. It's still lightened up here. So you can still see what's underneath, which is a cool addition, I would say. These are the three methods that I know of how to create a in-painting mask. Now that we understand a little bit more about how to create our in-painting masks inside Comfy UI, I want to go ahead and start the in-painting denoising process. Normally you would think that we would be using the standard text to image K sampler. However, this is not the case. You can think of in-painting as basically image to image on a localized region. Instead of using this K sampler, which starts denoising a empty latent, we are going to decode the masked area into a latent space and then denoise that. So first of all, we'll need a case sampler that's not advanced. Like so, create your normal case sampler. And then you can see here, we have a denoise right here. In case sampler advanced, you don't have it. There is a way to do denoising by ratio by calculating the steps using the case sampler advanced. However, I have found in most cases, this doesn't do the same thing or it's off for some reason. So I just go with the tried and true normal case sampler with the denoise. So let's go ahead and just connect up the same models, everything like that. All we're missing now is the latent image. And where is the latent image coming from? Now we have to convert this masked area into a latent image. So we need a VAE encode. Like that. Let's go ahead and set up this node. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any doubts, make sure the colors match up. Blue is always the pixels, green is always the mask, and red is oftentimes the variational auto encoder. So I'll just drag mine all the way over here and plug that in as well. One more thing, we have this grow mask by, which is an option to add padding around the mask we've drawn here. You don't have to worry too much about it because this is not going to be what we use in the end. So drag this latent over to our denoise K sampler and then connect this to the latent. Everything looks good to me. Let's go ahead and generate. So you can see it running, trying to figure out the face here. I also connected the rest of the things up here. So I had steps and the random seed going in here. And we can look at the final result. It is a little bit better than what we had before, but still not that great. So why is this face not working out so well? The first issue is we don't have enough pixel space here when working with this. You can see here that we are taking whatever we painted in here and then putting it in here. However, what we mask in here is likely not 1024 by 1024 pixels or something that SDXL is used to working with. Rather, we can check what this is instead using our nodes here. So let's go ahead and copy that, put it here. So we want to convert our mask to an image. So mask to image. And this probably might not work because it will give us a different crop. But let's see what this gives us first. Preview image. And let's go ahead and mute this so it doesn't run. 
run. You can see that after running this, we get this mask here. However, we should have a crop of this, not this giant black with just this white thing. So if you overlay it like this, that's what we have. And what we want is to get the bounding area or bounding box of this white mask and see how big it is. If it's not 1024 by 1024 pixels or something similar, then we are not getting our money's worth from SDXL and its capabilities. To extract this white blob or white mask localized bounding box crop, we're going to enlist the help of these masquerade nodes by Bad Cafe Code. You're free to use whatever other tools that can achieve the same effect, but I like this repository as it helps you work your way up from a very granular level. This way you'll understand why we're using certain nodes and how it works in the step-by-step -step process. First off, we want to convert this mask to an image. We've already done that here, but there's also a dedicated node that does this for you. Convert masks to images from the WAS node suite. So it depends what you want to use, but there are several nodes that can accomplish the same function. And let's go ahead and check if it's the same. They should be the same. Yes, they are. And now we're going to need to create a square crop around this only. So first up, we're going to use this node called mask to region that drag that in here. Remember blue pixel to blue pixel. You can set the padding if you want. I'll just go like 24 or something like that. And then let's go ahead and visualize what this gives us. Now you can see around this white mask we've drawn, it's created a square. Excellent. And the reason why it's a square is because we have these constraints X and Y. If we change that to 100, you can see that the width is now 100 instead of 64 and it's become a rectangle. That's not what we want. So let's go back, keep it a square for now. Next, we want this white square to be cut out from the original image so that it is its own white square at full resolution with no black background. To do this, we take the cut by mask node this time. So bring that in. Once it's created, you'll see that we can provide five different values. The image is the original image. So let's go with this one right here. Then we have the mask, which is the mask from mask to region. Then we have this third one, mask mapping optional, which I've never used, so I don't think it matters. And lastly, we have force resize width and height. The values that go in here are the ones that control the resolution of the crop. Let's first use our existing nodes from the image down sampling to print out the current resolution of the mask to region crop. Go ahead and run this in a vacuum for now just to see what will happen obviously this will fail forget image size because there is no input however you are also failing on cut by mask because there's no force resize width or force resize height so what do we do well we can either try with this image or try with this let's go ahead and try with this so the expected behavior here is that it's just going to give us the resolution of this entire image, which is a white mask on top of a black background. We're not going to be able to get the resolution of the white mask by itself, unfortunately. Run, and now we have another gotcha here. Error occurred when executing get image size, samples.shape3, samples.shape2. The issue here is that master region creates an alpha image and we want to have an RGB image instead of an RGBA image. Let's go ahead and convert it with an images to RGB node from WAS node suite. And now check what the expected behavior should be. Originally, we took this 2K image and then cropped it down to a 768 square pixel image and then drew a mask on top of that. This entire black square should be 768 as well. Check it. And yes, that is 768 by 768. Now let's go ahead and play with this cut by mask for fun. So make sure it's hooked up to an images to RGB. We're just going to put some for fun values for a force resize width and height. Let me go ahead and create a primitive for each of these. What if we do five and five? Yes, we get something correct now. So with deduction, we can tell that this force resize width and height controls this mask resolution. Knowing this, let's continue. I'm going to create this SDXL resolution right here because I'm going to use 1024 by 1024 here and convert these to inputs. Here we go. 
width and height. At this point, theoretically, this should be 64 by 64 pixels. However, we can't know for sure due to the nature of these nodes. But now let's go ahead and preview this and voila. Now we have this part of the face cut out in a square. Nice. And for sanity's sake, let's check how big this image is now. So run that. The resolution is 1024 by 1024. What we've done up until now is we've taken this black mask we've drawn and turned it into a white square crop out of this. So we have the base image that we're going to work on. But what about the mask? The mask has not received these transformations at all. We're still stuck with this or this. All we have to do is duplicate this cut by mask. Control C, Control V. Please recall that we put the image into here from the original. So see image to image. But now for image instead, we're going to use the mask. So take this and put this into the image. I hope that makes sense. For this, we're using the image as the base. Now for this, we want to use the mask as the base. Copy that and preview. There we go. Now you see we have matching resolutions and the locations follow each other. Great. So we have everything we need now. All we have to do is put this into the same in painting that we did here, but a little bit different. Let's go ahead and encode our pixels now. So thanks to this workflow, we can see what we're doing. Pixels are from here. Let's go ahead and add this VAE encode that. There we go. And then we want to have our VAE come in here. We've encoded the pixels into latent and now we want to give the latent space noise mask, set latent noise mask here. And our mask is from here. However, this is an image. Remember, green is mask, image is pixels. So image to mask. There we go. And now drag this mask all the way up there. Lastly, latent to latent. So we're not using this one anymore. We're using our new high resolution in painting. Reactivate this and run it. So we should see stuff show up in here. Oh, wow. You don't say. We're getting a face here, whereas before we were getting blobs. Very interesting. However, there is one issue we have now that might not be so apparent. There's a few issues we have to solve on this image, but I just want to go ahead and compare with the previous workflow, the non high resolution in painting using this VAE encode for in painting on this. So whatever pixel resolution this is, we're only working on that. So here we go. Let's bring those images in here to compare that and that pretty drastic difference i would say this is very incomplete and this seems very well rendered however there's improvements that still have to be done as well as compositing so let's do the compositing first and what i mean by compositing is remember we should get this as an output not this this is a medium or in between what we have to do is stitch this head or face back onto the original body, which we're not doing here yet. Don't worry, it's not super difficult, but it is not that self-explanatory to do, for sure. The node that we will need here is the paste by mask node. So let's go ahead, paste by mask. And it's also from masquerade nodes. If you look at the badge in the top right corner here, you have four different inputs with one of them being optional once again, which is the mask mapping optional one. You also have resize behavior, but we'll get to that in a moment. First for image base, we're going to use the original image. Find it, it's going to be this one. Reroute and pull it all the way over here. Next is image to paste. This is going to be the decoded image from our high resolution in painting. So here, make another one, done. Next we have our mask or mask to region. Remember that we cut out the white square from the original image here, this one. And this comes right after the mask to region. The purpose of this is to allow the square crop around the face and only the square crop around the face to be replaced. So grab that. Pull it over, reroute once again. Somehow this got messed up, no worries. Okay, there you go. Lastly, resize behavior. I'm going to change this to keep ratio fit. 
So we are ready to preview this. However, instead of going straight ahead and connecting all of these nodes properly, I am not going to connect the image to paste one. I really want to showcase what exactly the nodes are doing. So for the time being, I'm going to change the seed to fixed. Here we go. And then I'll create a solid black color using the comfy roll color panel. So CR color panel and also preview the image as well. This is going to give us a black image. Also make this 1024 by 1024. We'll run this and connect this to here. And what we should get is a black square on top of our original image. Let's do that. And there we go. This is what's happening right now if we use this solid black color on top. And if we change image to paste to be the output from our VAE decode and the high resolution in painting workflow, we will get something better. So we can watch this go on like that. You can see this is not exactly what we expected. However, the issue is that I forgot to change from this to use our high resolution in painting workflow. So here, if we're using this one VAE encode for in painting, that's the wrong one. We need to use this one. Let's go again and we should be getting the face pasted over here correctly. So you can see it's forming correctly over here. Will it be overlaid correctly here? Time will tell. But yes, it is. Great. My point still stands. When you have this image over here, we'll get black square. And if we have this over here, we have high resolution face on top. So let's analyze this image. Is anything out of the ordinary? Anything broken? Are there any seams? And it doesn't seem to be so. So that seems fine. Haha. <laughs> Now, there's one more thing I want to try. How do you know that this workflow is actually working? Does it only work for this or does it have another use case? Remember that we cropped this original 2K image down to a 768 by 768 square crop. Why don't we try using the original image this time instead of this cropped one? Let's go ahead and create new reroute nodes. So let's just connect everything that we should connect that image down here and lastly we have another image down here to the cut by mask okay and now we have the mask from here once again create another reroute and this time it's set up a little bit better now we are working with the 2k image and not the 768 square crop so this time we should be getting a final image not of just this bust up crop but of the entire body and there we go, the head and painted at a higher resolution on top of the original body. So while the proportions are off, you can see that the face was impainted at a higher resolution and we can compare it if we just take a look at what we had before. So this very low resolution, very high resolution and composited back onto the body. If you have any qualms about it, you can go ahead and change the seed back to something random and then try to find something that looks aesthetically pleasing to you. For me, I don't really care at this point. This is just a demo. Yeah, now we get something else that's a little bit different. So it's working. I want to bring up one more thing, which is that there aren't any seams in this new image or the previous image as well. In the older versions of Masquerade nodes, I did think there were some seams before. I avoided it by using something called image blend by mask and set blend percentage to one. And to do that, I'll just show you really quickly what that looks like. From your composited output, this one, make that your image B. Image A is going to be your original image or image base from up here. And then the mask is also the same mask like that. Blend percentage at 1.0 and preview image once again. And this time we get something new as well because of random seed. And you can see not really any seams or discoloration. Now there's just one more thing that I want to clarify, which is if you look carefully, this face is really high resolution. And if you look at the rest of the body or the illustration, it's kind of mid resolution kind of cell shady, not very refined. So it's up to you if you want to go through and fix up each of these parts into high resolution, or you want to make this in painted area or face downscaled or a little bit more blurry and then latent upscale everything later using control net or whatnot. It's up to you how you want to work, but if you want to keep more of a balanced harmony in detail, you can do a resize after your VAE decode. So remember we did an image resize using this node, connect our image in here and rescale to half. 
I would say that's pretty good and connect it in here and let's run it again. So we should be getting a downscaled face here and it should fit in better resolution wise. However, we can go with 0.1 to exaggerate the resize. And now you can see when we resize it to 0.1, it becomes a lot more blurry. So this depends on how you want to use it. For me, I'm okay keeping it high resolution, but I usually do do a little bit of a rescale to a smaller downsampled version if I do use this workflow. So something like that, probably 0.3. Yeah, see? 0.3 looks pretty good. Before I continue showing other applications of compositing and inpainting, I want to introduce the Ackley inpaint nodes. So if you don't know who Ackley is, he also created the Credit AI Diffusion Python plugin, and I've been using this on a project so far. It's a full end-to-end -end pipeline, so it's going to take quite a while to finish the video as I'm still recording, but yeah, that's an aside. Anyway, the fascinating aspects of these inpaint nodes are not only the ability to fill the existing masked area with various colors or blurs, but also to transform any STXL model into an STXL inpainting model with the help of a patch using models from Focus by Ilias Field, the creator of ControlNet. If you click on this, read more, and go over here, Focus inpaint or outpaint. To set it up, just follow these directions. Click on this, it'll take you to the hugging phase. Download all of these and put them in this path pretty easy. I hope you guys can figure that out. As an aside, I've never really had issues using the base STXL model for inpainting. You can see here that our model is not using the patch and it's doing quite well. But let's go ahead and load up the pre-process workflow that Ackley provided us here. If you click on this pre-process, this is the one we want. Also, if you get clone this repository following the instructions like this, you will have a workflows folder you can go in there and also get the workflows from here. Once you load up the workflow, it looks something like this. I've just swapped out the image that he was using here, as well as changing the model to the model I trained in my STXL training video. Change the prompts as well. Let's get to it. First of all, let's check out these purple nodes. Basically, you want to follow this structure. You have your positive and negative prompts going into this VAE encode and inpaint conditioning. Remember when I was showing you how to set it up, there was a VAE encode for inpaint. This is D default in Comfy UI, so it's almost like that. And after that, you connect your latent inpaint to this apply focus inpaint node. So in here goes the base model, and then the patch green to green, and then latent inpaint pink to pink, and then you still have to have your latent samples, which is your latent image. One thing I want to point out is that this is not doing a high resolution inpaint at all. We will have to patch this up and integrate it into our existing workflow. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at the settings. So if we go to the repository page, you can see here for fill masked, there's three options, Neutral, Talea, and Navier Stokes. If you don't know what Navier Stokes is, good for you. If you do know what it is, you're probably an engineer. Each of these options fulfills a premise. Neutral fills with gray, good for adding entirely new content. Talea fills with colors from surrounding border, based on algorithm by Alexandru Talea. Why don't we look him up? If you go to this paper, an image inpainting technique based on the fast marching method, I think this is it. This is from 2004. This is what it's doing. And lastly, Navier Stokes, which fills colors from surrounding border based on fluid dynamics. So we can open up these two base images and see what's going on. This is Talea, so it's doing some kind of smearing. And then this has a cleaner smear. So if you want big blobs of paint, use Talea. And then if you want to use a more smooth version of blurring, use Navier Stokes is all I can say heuristically. Let's head back to the nodes and see that fill mass area has these three different options, neutral, Talea, and Navier Stokes. And I've also already painted in this mask for the face. It probably won't help too much because this is not a high resolution in-paint workflow. Let's go ahead and make sure this is connected up to this node here because this is the one that encodes the pixels. If you follow this, this, and then here, pixels. Okay, it looks good to me. Run. 
the in-painting is done. As you can see, this is very reminiscent of the low resolution in-painting. Obviously, there's no masquerade cutout or anything like that. We will integrate that later. However, let's go ahead and try each of these just to see what's going on. Duplicate this one over here so we can see what the other two look like. In fact, let me just copy and duplicate those over here. Mute the case sampler as well, since we only want to see previews. Troll, Talea, and then Navier Stokes. Let's check it out. Yes, yeah, so you can see the different types of smearing. So gray is gray. We already saw that one. Talea gives you this. And then Navier Stokes gives you this. Pretty similar. You put them side by side, basically the same. And now we want to see the effect of the fall off. Here, 11, if we pump it up to like, say, 50, what does that give us? Yep, something like that. No fall off. Uh, it's like a blur. So increase from zero to six. Check it again. Yeah, blurred the edges and shrunk it as well. So be conscious of this. We've covered fill mask area. Let's go ahead and look at blur mask area. This is something that I didn't mention or integrate in my high resolution in painting workflow. I will show you how to do this using a Gaussian blur, changing the sigmoid settings. So if we go to the side here, you can have a impact Gaussian blur mask like that. Change the kernel size and the sigma. These blur mask area nodes are novel to me. They might be part of this node pack as well, so I'm not sure. If we change the fall off zero, it should be flat. Yes, see totally flat here. And if we move it up 59, it should be like a blob. There it is. It's too high. <laughs> Seems like when you go past a certain point, it basically becomes Talea or Navier Stokes fall off 20. You probably won't be using fall off that much for blur mask area. Instead, you want to control the strength of the blur, which would be the value up here in blur. So at 255, we get this completely blobby gray circle. If we go to something low like 28 or so, we get something like this, which is more in line with what we want. And now we can try mixing in a higher fall off. This will probably make the edges not as sharp. And yes, the expected behavior that we observed before is that it shrunk a little bit it and that is what's happening here. So keep your fall off low and keep your blur low as well is the advice I have for you in the blur mask area node. Something like this is great. Remember, in painting just uses the existing color information. And this is the original image just to show you guys what it looks like if you've forgotten. The colorful stuff probably comes because of that side can go over one more thing here, which is the load in paint model. If you go back to the repository page, it says there's a fast in paint model on the mask area. This basically is another way of filling the area in here. Instead of doing this smearing, you can go ahead and see what's happening here. So there's kind of like an impasto <laughs> effect, and then you can use this as your base to in paint. And you can see here that there's llama and mat. Uh, llama is just llama, and then mat is this one places 512 pth file. There's just one more thing I want to go over, which is the outpainting here. There hasn't been that much information about outpainting for SCXL or outpainting in general. Luckily for us, Ackley has included a pad image for outpainting here. There is a default node for this one called padding, I believe image padding. So this one's from WAS node suite. If you want this one, same exact one that Ackley's provided. Type in outpainting and then pad image for outpainting. A little strange, but don't worry about it as long as you can find it. Here it is. Note that if we want to use this node, we need to connect it into these entry point reroutes. So here we go. Image to image mask to mask. So if we take a look at this node down here, you can see that it's padding the image for outpainting, meaning it's adding 128 pixels to the left and 128 pixels to the right. So we will have a little bit of margin on this side and this side. And please recall for me that this is a 1024 square pixel image and you're essentially adding 256 pixels to it. So the new width will become 1280 pixels. So let's go ahead and mute this once again. We just want to see what these previews will look like. Previewing is done. Let's go one by one. Check up here. These are just the same as down here. Fill mask area. If we do neutral, we're just adding gray on the left and right. Now, if we use Talea, it's adding this, and you can see that it's doing some kind of smearing effect, which is very interesting. If we want to use the existing colors and not create new information, 
perhaps we should not be using neutral, something to keep in mind. Bring down the fall off a little bit and see if this affects it. See, if we bring it down to four, there isn't that nasty line seam that you saw before. So check out Navier Stokes as well. You can see that there's a seam when you go high on 11, lower that as well. So five, four, I don't know. Yep, so when we use the lower number for the fall off, there isn't this seam here. Now, if we go to blur mask area, this is very simple. It's just doing this. If we change the fall off, maybe seven, you can see that it won't blur this as much as you think. Yeah, see. It just expands it and then runs a blur there. It really depends what your use case is. It's not so complicated and they're oftentimes repeating each other. Lastly, you can see here that there is basically no seam. The reason being is this is a fast inpaint model. So it tries to use the corresponding pixels around the padding to generate this preliminary base. Remember, if we want to add new stuff, it's best to use gray good for adding entirely new content. Let's go ahead and try each of these first neutral 11 looks good to me. Go ahead and change our prompt. No longer do we want a beautiful male face. Let's say aqua teal environment ice, something like that. Unmute our node there and run. So it's completed and it's true to its word. It's added completely new information and used basically nothing that was there before. So it went from white to teal, completely denoised. So I could see this padding outwards workflow with a neutral gray to be very good for creating some kind of framing design. Maybe we'll use that later, I don't know. Now let's go ahead and use blur mask area. I think this will do very well. There we go. It's created ice. You're looking from an ice cave outwards into the environment, something like that. But it is using the existing information from this part. Maybe add something like flower, sakura blooms. I, I don't know, cherry blossom. Now let's go ahead and check out the fast in paint. So this one down here, run it. It probably won't be super different. And if we don't like too much of the strength, we can turn down this denoise. Same as always. Here is the result if you use the fast in paint model. It's added this sakura cherry blossom tree on the right and filled in a little bit more of the blurry area. Let's check the final version. So it looks pretty consistent, I would say, but not too much has changed. We can try some of these smearing techniques. How about Navier Stokes? Why not? This probably won't be super different from any of these, but it's good to try and really understand what's happening in each of these. Let's check the result. Yeah, it seems very good as well. Probably a little bit better than the fast in paint, I would say. The seam is more or less gone. Just a little bit here. Your mileage may vary. We've more or less got a handle on how all of these Ackley in painting notes work. Let's try and integrate those in with our high resolution in painting workflow. This is where we left off in our high resolution in painting workflow before our little segue and investigation into the Ackley in painting nodes. Let's go in order and pour over the features one by one. If you recall, the very first one is fill masked area with 50% black or pure gray. The helpful note here mentions that it is best suited for adding objects or making drastic changes. We probably don't need this to replace the face, but let's go ahead and add this in anyway. It'll be good to have a wide selection of tools that will help in each use case. The question now becomes, where do we add in the fill masked node? Well, it's quite simple. We have to change this part and fill this area or our masked area with gray. That comes right after the cut by mask and directly before putting our pixels into the VAE encode. Type in fill masked or masked fill. There we go, our image is in here, simple. And then we have mask. Remember, we had the second cut by mask that is a duplicate of this, making sure that they follow the same transformations. I'll bring that up there, and there we go. However, we can't connect it because this is an image. We must convert backwards into a mask. Convert, image to mask, there we go. And output here. Let's go ahead and save ourselves some trouble of having this entire workflow run by muting this VAE decode here with control M. However, oftentimes you may feel that it is tedious to go back and forth. So going to the very end of your workflow, muting this VAE decode, coming back here and checking your mask. Let's simplify the process. 
So come back here, unmute this, and we're going to use the help of something called the RG3 nodes. RG3 is another set of custom nodes, so you'll have to install them here, RG3 Comfy. And the one that we're going to use is something called Fast Muter. It tells you how to do it. However, it might not make so much sense if you just read this. So I'll go ahead and do a quick demonstration. First off, we need the RG3 Mute or Bypass Repeater node. You might wonder, what is the point of this? Yeah, good question, good question. It's really not so straightforward. Sometimes you have to dive into the code to understand what's going on. Now go ahead and create a group. You can call it whatever you want. I'll call it VAE decode. Make sure it's surrounding whatever you want muted as well as the mute node here. And I'll change the color just to make it more pronounced. So since this is usually the purple one, I'll make this one purple as well. Once you have your singular group with everything set up appropriately, you want to output this mute bypass repeater node into a fast meter RG3, not fast groups meter, just the basic bare bone singular fast meter. Remember in the RG3 repository, a powerful control panel node to quickly toggle connected node. So there you go. Once you connect here, you can see that it has the same name, opt connection. There we go. And once that's slotted in, it gives you this. Now go ahead and quickly rename this. The naming scheme confuses me. Enable mute bypass repeater RG3. Yes. So you would assume that it's enabling the mute, but it's actually not. So if you toggle this on and off, it's muting this, so the naming structure is inverted. Change the name on the one inside the group. Go here, right click, title, and just call this VAE encode. And now, once you rename it, you can see here, enable VAE encode, yes. And then when you toggle it off, no, great. So let's change the color on this to blue. And remember, we wanted this to be useful. We don't want to have it set up over there. And when we want to mute the VA encode and just preview the masks, we have to uh, scroll all the way over here, zoom in and do all that. No, just drag it over to where you're working at. So if you want it to be enabled, just click yes and look over here. It's enabled, toggle it, muted, out of sight and out of mind. So now that that's muted, let's go ahead and generate so we can preview the mask. And there we go. So you can see we didn't generate a new image because everything depends on the VAE encode and if that's muted nothing will happen. Now that we have visualized what the filled mask area with gray looks like, let's go ahead and run it. So enable your VAE decoder group with that and change the pixels being used over here and then plug this one in as opposed to what we were using before. Although we're on a fixed seed, we should be getting something different because we are no longer using the base color information from here. Go ahead, run it, and it's looking pretty different. This is the result that we get. So when you don't follow the existing information, you get something completely different. However, this presents a few issues. What if you do want something completely different or something that's not using the existing color information, but you want to preserve the shape of this head? What do you do? There are two things that we can try to preserve the existing shape or structure of this base head. First thing that you may notice is that we have load focus in paint pack. So let's go ahead and do that first. If you follow the workflow here, you're going to need these three nodes. You can go ahead and copy and paste these nodes across to your current workflow but let's just create them manually. It helps with the learning process a lot more. First one is the focus in paint patch, color coded in purple, follow that convention. Next is the VAE encode for in paint conditioning. And lastly, we have the apply focus in paint. There we go. Connect up what should be connected. The patch goes to here, latent in paint goes to there. We have latent samples, create a temporary reroute for that. And positive and negative is the conditioning output put like so. Okay, and then let's go ahead and set the correct things for this one. Focus in paint head and then in paint version 26. I want to preserve what we have right now so we can do a comparison. Control C, Control V like that to create a new one. And I'll color code this one to be the default that. And then I'll color code this one to be something a bit more custom. So this will symbolize our patch applied in painting. And this will be just SDXL normal with no in painting model patched. Connect this up in here and then latent samples to latent image, model to model. And now we have to connect in our conditioning as well. So 
Let's go here. Lastly, we have these three. So VAE, pixels, and mask. Note we have this one for VAE already. Pull that over there. Pixels is this one. And then mask is this green one down here. Create a reroute so we can split more easily. And we should be good to go run this as well. So instead of having this latent, we'll use this one. Okay, generate. There was a small mistake. I didn't connect a model in here. So let's go ahead and fix that and run. Okay, great. We have our first error here. The issue is that given groups equal one, weight of size of this tensor expected this tensor to have three channels, but got four channels instead. What does this mean? Why is this happening? If you go in here and check this, I believe that we are working with an RGBA image here now in fill mask area. And this expects only an RGB image. And to fix that, we're going to need an image to RGB. There you go, connect that into images and then this up to the pixels once again. Hopefully reduce our channels from four to three. So this is our result. It hasn't preserved the shape of the head and instead tried to do its own thing like before. However, the colors are a little bit different. Without this inpainting patch, we get this, which looks more harmonious with the existing image. And if you use the patch, it looks very subdued. I'm not so sold on this inpainting patch for this particular instance. However, we can just leave it here in case we do want to use it. Since the inpainting patch has not preserved the shape of the head, let's go ahead and use control net as our backup option. Now let's try out control net for our previous non-patched high resolution pre-filled gray version. So this one and not this one. As such, we'll need a control net advanced node. Net apply advanced. Here we go. We need to put in our conditioning here. So positive and negative prompt drag from here. Done. We also want to connect this up to our VAE decode. Going to shelve this one for now. Now we'll need the control net model, control net loader. Going to go with a depth for now. SDXL depth, put that one in. And now we need the pre-processed image. Let's find the image before it gets pre-filled. So here we go. Bring out that reroute. And now we need the depth estimation. Let's go with Zoe and preview it. So this will go into our image, but let's go ahead and preview it to see what's going on. That means we have to use our mute node again. Disable, run. This looks like something that we want, I would say. Go ahead and connect your conditioning up here. Bring that up, place those, and we should be good to go. Re-enable our VAE decode and run. It's finished and we get this result. It's adhered to the shape of the head and the face that we had before, as opposed to changing the direction. Once again, you can see that the color palette has changed completely and it's not using the base color information because we pre-filled with gray here. And remember, filling with gray is good for adding new information. Ending up there is completely dictated by the prompt. Portrait of a teenage male with a white and dark desaturated blue color scheme. However, this is not giving me that. I don't know why, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Now you see what happens when you use a control net on the non-patched version. Before we try it on the patched version, I also want to create a muter node on this to bypass the control net and run it without all of this extra conditioning. However, we won't be using a muter node. This time, we want to use something called a bypass. So let's get to that. Once again, create a group, add group, and encapsulate your control net in here. Rename it, and then change the color as well. Now that we have our group, let's go ahead and add in our repeater node. This one is the same one that we've been using before, but this time, instead of using a fast muter, we're going to use a fast bypasser. So just type in bypass. There we go. Connect this in here, expand this out. Remember to change the title of this to make it more understandable for humans. And now you can see enable control net depth. Yes, and if I toggle no. So let's go ahead and run it. So it should give us what we had previously. Yep seems to be working very good now that we've established that the bypass is working let's go ahead and create the same exact control net for the inpainting patch band out your group enable it control c control shift v to paste it with all the connections intact we want to connect this before it heads into the final part bring this in here 
I'm not sure if the order matters on this, but we'll see. And then connect it into this over here. And let's see what this offers us. Don't forget to connect the correct latent. So that to that, because we're doing the focus in painting patch. This is the output that we get. I would say it's not doing particularly well. However, you can see the effect of control net as it is fitting it into this area here. For the time being, let's shelve this control net stuff and explore the rest of the Ackley nodes. I'm not going to work with the in-painting patch because I don't really like the result of it so far. It does have its uses, but let's go back and explore different methods of pre-filling. After neutral, which is 50% black or gray, remember we have Talea and Navier Stokes. Let's go ahead and just cover that really quickly. Go with Talea first. This time we have control net and we have this hooked up to our non-inpainting patch. Go ahead and generate. There is an issue here. So it looks like it's saying it's not in the correct format. I believe that it's once again stemming from the problem here where this cut by mask is supplying a RGBA image which has four channels. We don't want the alpha channel so we'll just do the same thing that we did here. Copy over the images to RGB, hook that in like so. Yes, great. With Talea the fall off is pretty high. Let's go lower maybe four. See what we're working with. It's still way too high. One and yeah, I think this is not working for us. Probably not a good idea for Talea here. How about Navier Stokes? Navier Stokes also doesn't look that good, I would say. It looks pretty bad. You might not be very convinced by the Talea and Navier Stokes pre-processing on our high resolution workflow, but if we head over to the Ackley pre-process workflow bundled together with the nodes, you can see that the same issues are occurring. So this is Talea, and if we change to Navier Stokes, something similar will occur. Yes. As a result, I believe this is expected behavior and we haven't broken anything yet. So even with this very suspect smearing, we still get an image like this, which is pretty interesting. And if we compare with the original, we get something pretty close color palette wise. So remember, this is without any high resolution in painting. However, we are working with a high resolution in this workflow. So ideally, it should look something like this, but it's staying here for some reason. Might be control net. I don't know. So that's it for the fill mask area. Now let's go ahead and disable or mute it once again and play around with the other pre-processing options such as blur mask area. Before we head into the blur mask node, I want to interject here as a sort of alert. While I was using this workflow for another project, I found out that Ackley's nodes suddenly stopped working with the image to mask functionality here using intensity. The previous setup here renders all the pre-processing nodes broken, so I experimented a bit and found this fix. Let me first show you the error. Right now I'm using intensity and nothing happens. That's odd. It was working before. Why is it not working anymore? Let's go ahead and change from intensity to alpha. Now run it again. And for a fall off of three, we get this. This is really weird. What's happening here? What about two? Nothing happens. What about one? We have these holes inside our mask. Does this mean that during the binary change from image to mask using alpha, the alpha mask is not completely filled with white. Hmm. Let's try out using the blur mask area now. Bring in our mask and then image from here. That will do a blur of 50, fall off of 20. And go ahead and preview as well. What do we get? Nothing happened. What if we go a little bit more aggressive with our blur? 100? Nothing is happening still. For the time being, let's use this fill mask area as our canary in a coal mine. Burn it once again. My suspicion is that the mask is not being fully filled in. If we go ahead and use alpha as our new method, because using intensity has nothing showing up except this weird weird thing over here, we will have to fill in the mask somehow. So change to alpha and grow your mask. 
with this node. Bring it in. First, we'll expand by one pixel. See what we get. Sure, but there's still some holes here. Oh, and you can see that blur mask area is working now. Hmm, interesting. Let's go with one more pixel. So expand by two. Are there any holes here? Nope. And what about this? Nope. The fall off might be a little too high. Lower it. Good. And I would say perfect. There you have it. The new fix for image to mask using alpha and then growing the mask. If you're concerned why I'm not replacing this with the intensity method down here, which hooks into these nodes, set latent noise mask and the patch inpainting method. The thing is nothing changed when I tested it with the intensity method when it hooks into here. Everything works perfectly so there's no need to replace it. That's why figuring out the fix to this was not so straightforward. As an aside, the subsequent videos won't have this fix applied, so that being the alpha and then grow mask method, but the final provided resources in the form of workflows will have it. Apologies, I don't have time to go back and re-record everything, but I did my best here. Let's go ahead and hook that up. Drag it over to here, base image, like that. However, the control net base image is separate from the image that goes in here, especially if you do some pre-filling. Control net gets its own unadulterated control net base image, and the pre-filled pixels get their own pre-processed version. Make sure that works out like that. Looks good to me. And let's go ahead and enable and run. So the result from blur actually looks pretty okay. Before we head over to the fast inpaint model, I want to show you another way to do a blur on the existing pixels that isn't using this blur masked area from the inpaint nodes. If you search in your existing nodes, you should have one called blur or image blur, and it takes in an image, drag an image down here, disable that. We just want to work strictly with this new node, copy, Preview, nothing's happening because our blur radius is low. If we up that, see what happens now. There it is, pretty blurry. And if you want to change the sigma, if you have a larger sigma, there is a larger kernel blur. So let's go up to three and then really see what's happening over here. It does take a long time, much longer than what's over here. Now we get this kind of pixelating effect, but depending on your use case, you have a different way to achieve the similar effect or a different effect, just offering more options for you. I want to point out an issue here that occurs if you choose to go with this image blur workflow. You will end up generating this kind of output so if you go over here and look at it, you can see in this image blur workflow, there is no mask here to assist us in only blurring the head portion of the image. Since everything is being blurred in this preview image and we're only running the case sampler on the mask, this is brought back into focus, but the remainder of the image is blurred. Let's go ahead and put this side by side with the blur mask area node from Ackley for a juxtaposition. See what I mean? As such, we need one more step of pre-processing here before setting it to the remainder of the workflow. We will do that with the help of the image composite mask node, which is a very powerful node. In this node, we have three inputs, the destination, the source, and the mask. You can think of the destination as the bottom portion of the layer stack, so everything will go on top of the destination. With that being said, let's bring in the original image down here and put it into the destination. Next up, our source is going to be what's going on top of the layer stack. So that is the image blur. And then our mask is just going to be this mask. Let's pull it from the image to mask, very simple, and then preview the image. What we masked out is being blurred, and everything under that is not being blurred. Now let's go ahead and connect this up to what we were using before and then enable our VAE. And there we go. There's no more blurring down there. Everything is in focus. Lastly, we want to try out the fast inpaint model. So go ahead and mute this image blur. It takes a while to process. And now we need inpaint, inpaint with model. So both of these, there we go. And same old thing, bring in your image and then your mask. And remember, we downloaded two versions here. There's one called Places and then one called Llama. So I think Places is M-A-T and this one is Llama. So let's just try Llama first. 
If we use llama, this head is completely removed, probably because the surrounding area is white and the fast in paint model uses the surrounding information. If we use places, what do we get? A computer monitor with some kind of plant, I guess, a desk setup, something like that. So I can't see this being supremely useful here. Let's just hook it up and try to generate to see what we get. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, it does give us something, but I would chalk it up to most of the heavy lifting being done by the control net. Once again, let's take a small detour from integrating pre-processing techniques. We'll circle back to outpainting later, but let's go ahead and work with IP adapter. You might ask, I thought this video was about inpainting and outpainting. It is, but the real concept that you should be trying to assimilate is compositing and manipulating portions of an image. Remember, we have sectioned out this portrait crop of the character. However, we can also mask out a different part of our image, then condition our image with a reference image with the help of IP adapter. So if we want to change something else, not the face in particular, we can go ahead and draw a new mask, say around this jacket if we wanted to. For the time being, I've reverted back to the default workflow that doesn't use any pre-processing on the base pixels. So you can see that whatever is being output from any of these fills or smears, I'm not connecting it to the pixels node over here, not using that. Before we get into IP adapter, I want to optimize the current workflow. We have the default workflow that doesn't do any pre-processing. Aside from this default vanilla node, we have these three nodes with vastly different pre-processing functionalities. To streamline this, I want to connect the vanilla image or pixels along with each of these pre-process nodes in series, as opposed to the current parallel configuration. If we're going to connect everything we have so far in series, it makes sense to start with your vanilla pixels and then slowly toggle on or off all the other pre-processing that you want to do. So let's go ahead and identify the flow here. Once you're at this point, you split off and you either enter the pre-processing section or you pass your vanilla pixels all the way over here. If you're using the vanilla workflow, you go in here and you can see that I'm using this one. If you're using the focus in paint patch, you'll use this part where I have to convert my existing RGBA pixels from the cut by mask of masquerade nodes over here to a three channel RGB image. So what you're doing is essentially getting rid of the alpha channel using this green images to RGB node. So you can see that there are repetitions that we don't really need. In fact, what we can do is just immediately apply this images to RGB transformation like that. And then we no longer have to use this anymore. Just reroute it up here and do that instead. We don't need this anymore. Test it as well. Just run it once for the vanilla. Okay. It's running and we can do a little comparison, connect up the focus in painting workflow and try that out as well. So we shouldn't error out here because we're doing the pre-processing here instead of there like before. Yep, no errors. Okay, so it looks like we are good to go to start setting up our series workflow. After the vanilla workflow up here, or the pixel entry, we'll connect it to this fill mask area node. So bring this up like that. And instead of using this images to RGB, we will just connect it to this like that. And we won't need this anymore. Let's keep this down here as a preview. So now that we have this, we want to make sure this is able to be bypassed if we want it to be. Create a group, drag it around here, make it more visible or change the name and the color. Fill mask area, and then we'll make it a little bit more vibrant. I think I chose a custom color, so... Okay, there we go. We have to put one of those mute or bypass nodes, so double click, bypass, repeater. Once you have this node in here, drag it out, let go, search, and we want the fast bypasser. See if we can toggle it. Yes, yes, good. And then make sure to rename this so it makes sense to you. And since it's toggled on, it should work. Before running what you have here, make sure that you're connecting this over here. Very important. Reroute and here. We don't want to go through all that work and not connect. And we're not going to replace this one over here. 
we're going to use the original image for that. Okay, so run. We should be getting something different, and we are. So there we go. The result is not particularly appealing, but it is working. Let's go ahead and bring in the blur mask area as well. So same thing, drag it up here and then we'll create a group for it. Same thing. And before I forget, just make sure that this is connected in here. So output to there and then that outputs to there, which connects all the way to our VA encode for pixels. You can maybe up the blur a little bit, create your repeater node. Now we need the fast bypasser. There we go. Connect that down here Then rename this blur masked area at this point you might think to yourself this is getting pretty tedious we're going to have to toggle all of these fast bypassers on their own worry not instead of having to manually toggle yes or no for these we have something called the fast groups so type in fast groups this bypasser here like that and once it's created we have all of these. I'm going to control these two right here. If I toggle no, it's muted. And if I toggle the blur mask area, it's muted as well. Magic, isn't it? If we enable both the fill mask area and the blur mask area, we're blurring gray. We don't want that. We want to make sure that the blur is on, but the fill is off. And now we should get a blurry image. Yes, there we go. Since we have VAE decode, enabled it's running that and there we go so we have one left which is the load in paint model and i'll just do that very quickly off screen the fast in paint is set up as well make sure it's connected in here you want to bypass fill mask area and blur mask area but keep fast in paint on i'm not sure what this will give us let's go and find out with the fast in paint I get this as my preview image, weird. And then my output is this, kind of a pretty good looking guy, I would say. Yeah, I really like this design. It's finally time to try out the IP adapter on our high resolution in painting workflow. The goal will be to try to replace the existing clothing on this character with a reference image. On a side note, I've copied over the previous generation as I wanted a clear example of the face. It's just a placeholder for now, so we'll see if this ends up in the final thumbnail or not. Anyway, let's go ahead and find some space up here to place the IP adapter nodes. There aren't that many nodes that go into this portion. IP adapter apply. Once you bring in this node, you'll see that you need an IP adapter model, a clip vision model, a reference image, and then the model that you're currently using. First things first, IP adapter model. Let's go ahead and grab that. IP adapter model. For this one, make sure you select the correct model, not any of this face ID plus. That's another video. IP adapter plus STXL vision transformer H. It's the one we want. So I have another one down here. That's just the vanilla. This one is the plus. It should be better. That one in. Now clip vision load. For this one, make sure you select the one that's working for you. It's usually a stable diffusion 1.5 model for this. I'll bring in the reference image later. I don't know what I'm going to use yet, so I'll have to do some generations. And then for the model, let's just bring this in. For some reason, I had this one here that was on another Laura. Yeah, we can use this offset one as well if we want to. Usually I think they put this at 0.1 or something. It doesn't matter. That looks good. And then for model, let's just like this one down here. I came across this image which had an interesting blue cow shirt that I could use. However, it's covered by these belts or some kind of vest, so I'll remove them using our existing imprinting workflows. However, you might realize that we currently have the IP adapter workflow implemented with IP adapter apply. To revert back to our high resolution inpainting workflow, we'll need to create a group for this and then add the repeater node again to bypass the IP adapter workflow for now so same thing make a group call ip adapter bring in the repeater there we go outside put the fast bypass pull that out done and just rename this and if you go ahead and look at our groups you can see that we have an ip adapter up here that we can toggle on and off great let's bring it up here and try using it disable and it's disabled
It's finally time to in paint out this part of the coat covering the blue shirt. Go ahead and disconnect what's in here already. Bring the one with the mask over, connect that up. And then I have my fast groups bypasser here so I can choose what I want. Yes, this looks good. I'm going to use the fast in painting to remove this part. I don't think putting gray here would be that great and blur definitely would not work here. Do I need control net? Probably not because if I put control net in, it's going to keep the straps there and I don't want that. It's already giving us something pretty clean. Will it be able to remove the belt? Not completely, but we can give it a few more tries or raise the denoise, showing what it looks like in real time. Looks pretty interesting. It's adding some buttons and whatnot. It's done and I found this one that I kind of like, or this would be good enough for me just as an example. Bring this up here to the IP adapter area. You can see the difference if you put them side by side without the coat and with the coat. Great. Disconnect this and bring back our character with the mask. So we want to replace the coat in here. I open that up with the blue shirt just as a test. So put that in here and then we can go ahead and hook up our reference image. Before we put in our reference image to the IP adapter over here, you can see we can connect to the image in here. We want to do some cropping and pre-processing just to hone in on this shirt detail and not have the rest of this image influence anything else. If you go ahead and search for image crop, there's two versions. There's the normal one and then I have an image crop plus. This one's developed by Cubic here. So if you want this one, you can go ahead and clone this one into your custom nodes. It really doesn't matter what you use personal preference. I think this one can do like a localized crop or it can search for it. So top left, center, etc. The width and height doesn't really matter here. Clip down to clip vision size, which is 224 square pixels. So we don't have to worry too much about that. And since we're going to run this and preview the image to make sure our crop is doing what we want, we're going to have to go ahead and mute our VAE decode. So, and then just disable VAE decode. If you go over here, you should see that it's muted. Great, preview what we have here. Okay, so it zoomed in a little bit too close. Zoom out a little bit more. So I'm going to create a primitive, then convert this one to inputs. This way I don't have to keep changing in between. Here we go. So 512, let's see how that goes. So we zoomed out a little bit and we can offset it. If we increase this, we should be going down. Great, this more or less looks pretty good already. Maybe we can shrink this to like 400 to zoom in a little bit more. Let's go with something similar to this. Plug this in to the image, enable IP adapter, and then unmute the VAE decode. All right, now we want to decide on what we want to do here with the image. What kind of pre-filling do we want to do? Do we want to blur it? Do we want to fill it with gray or fast in painting? Let's try it with just straight vanilla. Don't enable any of these and don't enable the control net either. Try to in-paint using this with IP adapter. So this is the result that we get. The idea is there. It is kind of working. But how can we improve this? Let's go ahead and look more deeply into this IP adapter. Here, there's something called an attention mask. If you paint in right here, that means when you're doing your generation, it is only going to affect or condition on what's on here. So let's go ahead and have the double power. So we have our normal mask and then we have an attention mask as well. Plug this into the attention mask and see the result. And it looks very, very good. It's deviated slightly from the original design, but this is very clean. Using the mask alone is not going to quite get us there to where we want, but using this mask as an attention mask as well really drives home the point of what we want to do. If this attention masking doesn't make sense to you, for me, it also didn't make sense to me either when I first started using it because I believe that using this normal mask would just be enough to drive the IP adapter. However, if you go over to Cubic's repository for the Comfy UI IP adapter plus and go down to attention masking, you can read about it. It's possible to add a mask to define the area where the IP adapter will be applied to. Everything outside the mask will ignore the reference images and will only listen to the text prompt. If you read this, it kind of sounds like this normal mask should be sufficient. 
So what I'm thinking is there's probably some kind of intermediate stage where it first goes through this attention mask and localizes it to this area. And then once this area has been sectioned out, then the second stage of the in-paint denoising happens in the case sampler. This is my hypothesis, but it seems to be working out fine if you do it this way. I'm sorry, I don't have a better explanation for you. So there you have it using the high resolution in-painting workflow with IP adapter to seamlessly put in a new outfit. Well, if you're an artist, then you probably see a lot of issues here. It's not a good idea to have this completely be blue unless that's what you're going for. I would prefer to have this replaced with some kind of white jacket. So let's go ahead and generate a placeholder white jacket. I did some generations and I found some jackets that I like. So I'm going to go ahead and just run them through the preprocessor to center on the jacket itself using the image crop node that I had before. So I have my preprocessed images now. So I have this normal jacket, this streetwear inspired one, and then one that's more of like a vest or something. We can try each one first and then we can combine them later using a image batch. So let me go ahead and create that one for reference and let's just go ahead and connect the first one to the IP adapter and see what we get. This is the result of the first one. It does look pretty interesting and it's turned it into a vest now instead of a jacket. We might need a control net to control the shape of the original one. Let me go ahead and try the other ones first as well before we get too complicated. So now this one which is the streetwear one. And you can see that it has inherited the characteristics of it. If we go over and, and look here, we have this design very close to this one. And you can also see that there is kind of this black square thing over here in the back. Probably it's hard to notice, but it's like a darker square and it wasn't present in our previous generations. Lastly, let's try out this image. I really like what's happening with this one. Very nice, and it fits the aesthetic of the character quite well. We'll just have to do some more cleanup, I would say. Now let's go ahead and disable IP adapter for now. I want to see if the darkened square crop occurs when it's not active. So I'll just bypass it here, run. All the manipulation is taking place. And let's check the final image blend by mask to see if we still have this darkened square. So if we go back and check the final image, there but it's very very faint not so pronounced if you check on the original image there is no dark square so there is something going on when we use the high resolution in painting workflow here i went back and did a little bit more debugging with the nodes and i realized that i was putting the wrong mask into the image blend by mask let me show you what i was doing incorrectly what i was doing was connecting this master region to the image blend by mask and you can see it's a square cutout I should have been connecting this one, which is the original mask converted to an image. There we go. Now I'm sending the correct mask all the way to the end. Problem solved. So if we look at this right here, you can see there's a very faint crop here. And on the subsequent save, you can see here only the outfit has been replaced. So all is well. Let's get back to IP adapter now and integrate in the control net. Here we are. Enable IP adapter. Yes. And then enable control net depth. Yes. I recall saying that I like this one. So let's try with control net on and then do a little batch imaging, combining all three of these images to see what we get. This is with control net. It looks a little bit better, but one thing that we can also do is use our previous in-paint pre-processing method. So we can pre-fill it with gray or do a fast in-paint. So maybe gray would be better here. Let's try it. One thing of note is I usually paste my fast groups bypasser everywhere so I don't have to always move around, zoom out, go everywhere to my various setups. So here I'm just going to go ahead and enable fill masked area like that. And I should be getting gray in the pre-processing. Let's check it out. Yep. This is what we're going with, with fill masked area, passing it over here and you can see it is using that information instead. Let's try out the fast in paint as well. I think this might help. Disable fill mask area, enable fast in paint. And this should become something else. Let's see. Okay, that is terrifying. I don't think this is going to turn out that well. Or is it? So now we're getting this interesting design down here. You can see that since it's dark, 
on the left this part is especially dark as well so not exactly what i'm looking for it could work but let's explore more currently i'm on a fixed seed still and i'm going to keep it that way as i'm going to do this batch imaging now so it's pretty simple drag from here your first one for here second image that in and then we will have a second batch image node staircasing down here like that and we'll connect it up here so now we should have a mix of images and before exploring let's turn off the fast in paint and go with a fill mask area once again i'm not sure if this makes that much of a difference but we can try let's zoom in on here to see how it's going we got an interesting mix of all of the styles in there and there we go not bad not bad very cool i think i'm going to try to change the mask a little bit more currently it's not doing exactly what i want it to do so here open a mask editor that we might need a higher denoise as well currently it's at 0 0.75 what happens if we crank it all the way up to one we shall see so when we up it to one it seems that a lot more of these sweeping changes are being done so this is what we have now it's up to you what you like to go with i think it's a little strong so i'll turn it back down and this is what we have for now i think this is okay not bad not bad before we move on to other topics, let's go ahead and compare the two images that we have so far. This is the one with the new white coat that I largely like. I'd also want to get rid of this desaturated yellow spill, and this is the base image we were working off of. Normally, I would take both of these two images back to Photoshop or Krita that I've started recently using, and then use a mask to paint in and blend these together. However, if you want to conserve your productivity bandwidth or decrease mental latency, you can go ahead and perform a similar process in Comfy UI. I've opened up a new Comfy UI window here and have also copied over the two images with the new design on top here and the base image or old design on the bottom. The node that will be doing the heavy lifting here is the image composite mask node. So there we go. Now we could start painting masks on either of these images. So open in mask editor for either image. However, let's use all the tools that we have so far. Remember, we have this canvas tab that we used at the very beginning and haven't used until now. So let's go ahead and try this one out. To use it, edit, get rid of these. We don't need that. Create a new image and remember that we're working on the 2K image resolution done. And then we'll have to go over and copy these images over into our tab. There we go. I have my new image on top and my old image on the bottom like so. Toggle between those. Very good. Lastly, all that we have to do is paint in a mask. So let's change the opacity to be completely black and then also go to the color black. We want to paint out different parts. So firstly, let's target this spill here. That doesn't look that great. Also some parts here and maybe some of this as well that we don't like. And another cool thing that you can play around is you can change the blending modes. If you go to lighten and then disable the mask, this looks pretty good, I would say, as long as we paint out all of these egregious areas. Maybe we'll try that. Some weird noise stuff going on there, artifacting, I guess. Remember, this is just the brainstorming phase, so we don't have to go super deep on this. We have something that works for us now, and remember, we have to activate it by enabling this green button or indicator here. If we go back here, we should be seeing stuff great and now lastly let's bring this mask in to here and make sure that all of these are correct so our destination sure and then that image preview in our resulting image we've painted out the yellow spill that was present and now we have this new design on top however we have this text here still i thought i painted that out uh, i understand what's happening the resulting image is not being piped out correctly because this one has the light in applied to it and this one doesn't so let's go ahead and replace it yes there we go very nice very nice let's get back to the last part of the in painting nodes which is out painting 
So if we go back to the Ackley provided workflow with all the pre-processing, you can see that we have this one pad image for outpainting that we haven't tackled at all yet. So let's go ahead and get that integrated into our current workflow. Before we start creating that node setup, let's go ahead and add some quality of life changes. Currently we have three workflow setups for our case sampler. Right here is text to image. And then over here we have in painting without the focus patch and then in painting with the focus patch. I'm going to disregard the text to image for now. Currently at the end of our workflow, we have this compositing done in the image blend by mask. And this obviously won't work if we are getting our latent from our text to image. So there are a couple of ways you can toggle your inputs here. The easiest one to use here is the switch node from the comfy impact pack. So let's go ahead, double click, type in switch, and then there's a switch any. Okay, so now we can drag in our first latent here and then we'll have a second one pop up. The numbers here control which one is going to run. So the very first one on top is one. And if we switch to this one, two will run. And then output the latent to here. Since we're using this, I guess we can't use the reroute. So let's go ahead and directly connect that one up. Get rid of that. So if we want to run the first one here with no patch applied, we'll set it to one and then run it. It's doing its thing right now. It's done, looks great. Our second one is here. To enable this one to run, switch to two. And now something should happen here. It is lighting up green, very nice. And you can see my denoise is at 1.00, completely denoising it. There you have it, the new image. Let's take a look. Yeah, very nice, a little bit yellow, but you can always get rid of that in post-processing. So very quickly, that's how you use this switch node to switch between two latents. Of course, you can use this for any other thing, maybe two images, whatever you want. However, this does introduce a kind of an issue where you'll have to always come back to that specific place. So. Uh, have to come over here and then toggle this every time I want to change whatever case sampler I'm using. So switching from the patch to the non-patch version. There is a workaround to this. To alleviate the situation, we can create a bookmark here. So type in bookmark and you'll have one from RG3. If you press the one key here, it should take you to this position. However, for some reason, my keyboard doesn't register here on this UI. I'm not sure. So if I put this to A instead, if I go somewhere else and then press A, it jumps to wherever I was here, but in the top left corner. If I want it to be like so, maybe frame it a little bit better. Yeah, that looks good. Can move away, press A, and then I'm back here where I can change my case sampler. This is a very powerful tool. Let me go ahead and set up a bookmark in the beginning as well. So bookmark, I will make this one W and frame it properly as well. So A, W, A, W. Very cool, very cool. If you want another one for IP adapter, you can go up here, put one here if you want to change the settings and I'll make this one S. Okay, so W-A-S, W-A-S, there we go. Now let's go ahead and set up the outpainting. I'm going to mute the VAE decode. Since we won't be needing that, we just want to preview the mask and we'll need this one. Pad image for outpainting. We'll connect our image. I think this will be our new one for now. So bring it over. There we go. Pull that out. Go ahead and preview both of these. Okay, if you want to add to the sides of this, it would be something like this, 128. And on the right, 128 as well. Generate. This is what we get. So on the left and right sides, we get the margin and we have the corresponding mask here as well. Because we have this feathering on, it's blurring the edges here. Okay, so now how do we integrate this into what we have so far? If we go ahead and just connect this up here to the existing setup, it goes through this entire pipeline over here but you can see the first issue is that this master region has failed pretty poorly. And as a result of that, we're not getting the correct output. Somehow it's breaking this up. If we're extending on either side, it seems like we cannot use this master region anymore. What if we just create a mask on one side, such as the bottom? Will it be handled correctly? 
I'm going to go ahead and convert these widgets into inputs. I'm going to expand downwards in this example. So there we go. And I'll go with 128. Let's go ahead and see what this gives us. We also need zero values for these as well. So that looks right. Okay, seems good. Sure. And something is happening here. Remember that we have a node down here that gets the image size for us. And it shows us that we're working with a 2K by 2176 because of the padding running, doing its thing. And it seems to be doing quite well, I would say. This is what we get after. The reflections aren't as accurate as I would like them to be, but you get the gist. This is a very basic use of the outpainting workflow. I don't think it's possible to outpaint both sides at the same time. So you have to do it one by one. And I think doing it one by one is better, but that's just my opinion. So we're almost finished, but I do want to do another example, not using this image, but instead outpainting from like a bust up shot or a waist up shot like this one. Let's try using him in this workflow. This is a 1k image. We can verify this by disabling our encode. Run it. Yep. So we're working with a 1k image that was padded downwards like that. And now let's go ahead and let it run to completion. So we get this because I forgot to change the prompt. Let's go ahead and make sure it's correct. I think I'm just going to call it clothes. It's kind of working, but it's not quite there yet. Something's going on here and I don't know what yet. Let's go back and check. Instead of using the fast in paint, let's turn on the fill mask area. And instead of doing neutral, we'll do a Taleo or Navier Stokes to see if we can smear this up. I'm not sure if it'll work, unfortunately. We got something a little better, but this Taleo or smearing didn't do anything for us. Let's try disabling control net for now. Without control net enabled, we are getting something pretty good. So there's a bit of a seam still. I guess that's just the nature of what's going on here. Let's just try again. It's looking better and better, I would say. And if the seam is still too apparent, we might need to up the feathering and just pump it up maybe a hundred. We can smear that up. Should change. Yes better. So this is what the result looks like when integrated into the high resolution in painting workflow. Lastly, I want to set up the nodes so that we can toggle in between the new outpainting workflow and the previous inpainting workflow. So first we're going to make use of the repeater and fast meter RG3 custom nodes. Nothing special. We've done it several times already and make a group, call it padding. Then go ahead and put it around that part. Same thing, we need the repeater. There we go. And just for good measure, drag it out to a fast meter. So you might think now, well, if you're muting it, so let's just go ahead and mute it. Nothing will go through here, but this is still not connected properly. What do we do now? Great question. RG3 has clearly thought about this because he has created a node called the context node. Context here and a context big. I'm going to bring in both of them so you can see the difference. The normal context is not going to be good enough for us because it lacks a mask category. Mask, no mask here, but there is a mask in context big. Delete that and first connect up these like so. So we have our first context big. Then we'll go ahead and create the second one. And in the second one, let's just put it over here and connect it to the output of this. There we go. And there you go. So now we no longer need these extra reroute nodes. You'll see in a second why. So let me position this so we have more space. Okay. Now we have these two side by side. Let's head over to the RG3 repository to get more information about this. If we scroll down in the repository, we can see the nodes and this context context big is the one we were just using. However, there's one called context switch. If you open that up, a powerful node to branch your workflow works by choosing the first context input that is not null empty. And then if you read this one, pass in several context nodes and the context switch will automatically choose the first non-null context. And the second hint is wondering how to toggle context to null use in conjunction with the fast meter. So that's exactly what we're doing here. By using this fast meter here, this is going to be disabled and then 
this one will hopefully run. However, we have to make sure that this context is going first. Go ahead and create the context switch big because we need to output the mask. Go ahead and connect the context up. So you might think we have to go like this. However, this ordering is wrong. You always want your muted one to go first. The reason being is that, as the documentation said, it takes the first context input that is not null or empty. So if this one is null, then it'll automatically jump to the second one, which is the classical high resolution in painting. And the reason why we use this context switch is because we need a mask. Very simple. Plug that in. If this is too messy for you, you can press them. Just click on these buttons here on the top left to push them down. And this is the old version. Let's bring in this one. Okay. And let's create a mask. Save to node. And change the prompt to make sure it's doing the right thing. Something like that. And then let's jump over to the end here with our bookmark. The way it's set up now, what do you think will run? Because this is muted, it's going to be running this classic in painting. But don't take my word for it, just run it and see for yourself. So there you have it, it's running up here as it should be, and it's not doing any out painting. Yeah, something like that. That's working as expected. Head back over, W, we're here now. So if we enable this, let's see what will happen now. Run it again, jump over here, it should be out painting. And there we go, it's doing that. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. So now we've set up this context switching and routing to handle whether we want this in painting or this out painting to process. Now that you see this kind of workflow, this should give you some kind of inspiration to actually change this section as well for the K samplers. We can probably switch out this switch any using the latent from the impact pack using the context switch as well. So why don't we go ahead and do that? To do so, we're going to first need groups for each of these K samplers. Create groups, call this one classic, and then a second group for patch. Okay. Inside each of these groups, you want the repeater once again. Just bring that one in, and you can just copy that over here as well. Rename them for readability. Good practice. This one is going to be K sampler patch. Same thing if you want to drag it out to a fast meter. You can always just use the groups, but I like to do it like this. And I've been keeping pretty consistent with the colors. So muter is going to be this blue and bypasser is going to be brown. Now we have these two groups working. And if we bring over our fast groups, we have new ones over here. K sampler classic and K sampler patch. Now we can go ahead and add in our context nodes. I don't think we'll be needing the context big because the normal context has latent. Bring that one in, latent right here, copy it. Latent right there as well, collapse them down. Now we need a context switch. No need for the big as well, context to context. We have this right now. We always want one of these to be muted. So we need to set up some kind of control system that makes it easier for us to have this function. What we can start doing here is instead of having separate meters for each one, go ahead and have them combine into one. Just connect this one and connect this one in here. Now you can see we have a K sampler classic and a K sampler patch. After that, there is a specific node called the fast actions button, also from RG3. And then you can connect this in here, set it to toggle all. Let's go ahead and investigate what this does. Right now, they're both yes, and if we do an action, they're both no. If we go back and make one yes and one no, they will switch like that. And we can see the example here. Very cool. This way we can control the flow of our K sampler. Unfortunately, I think this is only in here. We can check the fast groups to see if it's there. I don't think there's a toggle button here, so we'll have to come back to this area to check it, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem because we have our bookmark here. So we can maneuver around all we want. Just remember the hotkey. What we have currently here is the K sampler classic. Let's go ahead, run that. And then we can jump back and see what we'll be working on. We'll be working on this face. Our face is being processed, looking good. And now we want to check if our K sampler patch is working. So we'll click on this toggle. This one is activated. Run this one with a denoise of 1.0. It's always good to check your work. And yes, we are not using any outpainting. Okay, great. 
that's that to control the flow of your K sampler using the context switch. It's up to your personal preference on what you want to use here for your switch, either using the latent switch or the context switch. But I like to keep everything consistent, so I will not use this one anymore. Up to you. Using the same logic that I just showed you, I set up a second context switch to enable a K sampler text to image from the output of this in paint. I'm putting it into another toggle with the fast meter. This way I can toggle text to image on and off. So let me go ahead and drag this over here. Up here is my text to image. So if this is toggled off then this won't run and the first thing with the available context will run. So let's try this for now and run it. We should get this to do the in painting. Yes, you can go ahead and cancel it. Don't let that run. Now toggle this so the K sampler text will run now. And yes, our text to image is running irrespective of all of this. None of this is running now. Very nice. But there is an issue, bring this down here, which is that remember if we're going with a high resolution in painting workflow, we're going to take the image that we get at the end of this K sampler and place it with the original image. However, we have nothing to do here. See, this is obviously not what we want to do. In fact, we don't want to do this at all. So how do we link the state between this group for text to image and this group for cropping the image or just having the natural save? Basically, if the text to image is enabled, we want it to just save the image. If text to image is not enabled, so we'll go over here, toggle it off. Then if we're doing either of the in painting methods, then go ahead and do all the recompositing back. How do we set that up? There is no problem. RG3 has clearly thought of all these edge cases. To match the state of two groups or invert them, you can use a node called the relay node. Type in relay, there should only be one. Have that in and then if you right click on the properties you can go ahead and see on muted inputs mute on bypass inputs bypass and on any active inputs active this node needs an input and where does that input come from from this no it actually comes from whatever is in this group we have our k sampler outputting something and now we want this repeater to link up with these two states right here properties unmuted inputs we will go to active if we're not running this text to image then we should be running this. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the mute bypass repeater right here. It takes in this opt connection. So let's just drag from this yellow flag over here all the way down there. Okay, this is activated because this is muted. What will happen if we toggle that on and you see this is active and this is active. So it only works one way currently. If this is muted, then this is active, which is not what we want. If this is act, this should be muted. So we didn't handle that second case and the properties. Let's go over here, right click properties on any active inputs, active. We want this to be muted. There we go. And if we go down here, everything in here is muted. Let's go ahead and play with our toggle. It's hard to have everything on the same page. Toggle it, muted, active. Basically we're having the inverse character going on here. Great. Now how do we handle this? This thing is always running. How do we make sure that this is also following the similar conditional here? Well, that's pretty simple. All we have to do is just create a second one of these mute bypass relays, but this time we won't invert the properties on this one. Instead of copying this one, we'll just create a new one. Relay done. Bring in the same output slash input, depending on your point of view. Have that there. And if we right click on properties, this time mute is mute and active is active. Okay, so come over here to our image save, no crop group, create a repeater. There we go and drag over our second one. So yellow flag over here, voila. If this is muted, this is muted, and then this is active. So I hope you can see the logic here. When I toggle this on and off, I enable two different flows of the workflow. Click this on, this is active, click this off. Now I have my in painting here and I can choose from either in painting method with this, very nice. So this should spawn your curiosity even more. In the spirit of optimizing our workflow, let's go back and check 
if everything is working correctly run and we get this error here error occurred when executing mask to image and we can see that while this is null or it should be null this pad image for outpainting is being output and we can tell that is happening because I have a preview image here and the preview image should be this one because I did not enable outpainting image padding so what is the issue here apparently this context one is being run with the context output painting. So there must be something in here that is not null. And I believe that's the image. So how do I solve this? How do I make this context null? If we go over to the RG3 repository and check it out, context switch context switch big wondering how to toggle context to null use in conjunction with the fast meter this simplifies what we have to do basically we have to connect the state of this group out painting image padding with the state of this group which doesn't have a group yet make a group first add a group and then rename it to out painting or something like that now all we have to do is link the state up from context out painting to the state of this out painting image image padding and not the image. The mask is empty. That's why we were erroring out before here. So go ahead and create the relay node. And then we're going to move the repeater in here. Remember this needs a input. If I put this mask in here and it's pad image, it should be null. And then we'll connect this repeater here to here. Inside we'll create a repeater for this like that then move that in to there. And see, since this is muted, this is now muted as well. And now the context should be null. So I haven't changed any of these. Let me just toggle this on and off so you can see. Enable outprinting image padding, no. This is correctly nulled out. If I enable yes, this comes into play and this should run with the outpainting padding. So let's go ahead and go back to our original initial state. This was erroring out. So go over here, the mask is being created. Great, great. So this should run with no error. And we're using this case sampler classic, great. So this edge case has been handled. Let's go ahead and let it run till the end to see if it does this image crop replace correctly because of the changes we made as well. Always debug your workflow. Good, running. I had blonde hair in the prompt, nice. And you can see this image save no crop is not running anymore. So what if we want to test this again, make sure it's working. And this time I have text to image on and control net on. I wonder what's going to happen here. So it will be using this control net information of the head and generating a 1k image ideally be careful go ahead and try it jump over and toggle on text to image run we should be getting the control net information yep the control net depth pass depends on the mask cutout so be careful if you want to change the functionality it's cutting this out and then making that the mask if you wanted to use the whole image then you'll have to make some changes in here from the previous example, you might have realized there is an error or a bug here. Go ahead and enable text to image. And when we run it, it is running our classic inpainting version. So it's running that first and then running this. That shouldn't be happening. When we enable text to image, we only want to run text to image because we want to save our compute time and our personal time as well. So this is running when text to image is on. And this is what we do not want. So we will use the same logic that we used before. Coming back here, we muted the context outpainting group based on the outpainting image padding muted null value. We can do the same thing here with the context switch, remember? Because this is running into this second context switch. Create a group, call it context inpainting, bring that in, and we will need a repeater right here there and this will depend on this very simple remember we had this going here so if this is active this will be muted so same thing we will use this relay over here and just drag it into this context in painting over here there we go and it's muted let's go ahead and run it again so this should not run this time. Watch carefully to see if there's any changes. And there we go, nothing is happening here. So we have solved the issue. Now let's try the other case. When it's toggled off, text to image is not working, only inpainting is working now. And we want to toggle in between these two. Is that functionality still existing? Let's try it. So now this will run with the focus inpaint patch and we should have it composited on at the end here as well. Looking good, looking good. and. And there we go. Everything has worked out. 
Let's do one more example. Currently, when we're running our text to image, it's using the control net based on the image that's cropped out from the mask over here. So if we don't want to zoom in on this crop and instead use the original image, this without the mask, how do we integrate that in? Same thing, we will use a context switch and just look for the part where we're feeding that into the control net. If we follow the path of control net from here all the way back from Zoe depth map, this node here, and then where does that connect to here and it goes through and images to RGB. So I would say this is a good place to split it off. We'll go ahead and create a context switch. So we're going to switch two contexts and then create the base context as well. We'll need two of these. The first one is going to be the image from over here. As of this image, we have not yet cropped out a mask and we want to be using this one. So it spawns from this node, connect that into images over here. And for this one, we're just going to put in whatever we have here. This is going to be the cropped image. Then we'll pass our context in here and then we'll output our image into that. Currently, the way it's set up is that it's going to use whatever is in the first context if it's not null and it's not null right now. So it will run properly. So we can go ahead and just run it. You can see the example over here. This Zoe depth should become the whole body now after pre-processing. Yes, there we go. So you can see it's running like that and we're getting something else that's different. Very cool. Probably depth is not the best one here. Anyway, let's go ahead and make sure that it's set up correctly. So when text to image is enabled, this group should be enabled and this group should be null. And luckily for us, we already have the relay set up properly here. Let's go back here, really set up a bookmark over here go ahead and create some groups call this one original image and the other one cropped image set up a repeater for each and now we're going to drag all the way over from here. Remember this top one is going to be the inverse and you can see mute is to active. Let's go ahead and rename it it's just so we can know. Inverse. We want the inverse to go into this bottom one. It's going to be a little tough to drag it all the way over. Drag it over first. That. Make sure that's in there. You can see it automatically mutes itself and then do the same one for this one. Like that. Okay. There we go. Let's just go over here and try out with the toggling. If I toggle my text off, let's go jump over there. Text off. So this is off and we're in between the two in-paint models like that. This top one should be muted. Yes. And this one should be enabled. To run that, is it going to in-paint the face? Yep. Looks like it's doing so. In-painting the face using the depth map. Depth map has changed. And then this one's running over here, doing our compositing. Nice. Make sure that the other one's working as well. Always good to check your work. So this one is enabled instead of the classic. This is the focus in paint patch. Yep, looks like it's working. So there you have it. Hopefully all this step-by-step -step trial and error workflow that I intentionally made helps you understand how to use high resolution in-painting for compositing, IP adapter, RG3 nodes to do context switching, and muting and bypassing for quality of life. Before I finish up, let's not forget to thank the channel patrons. Thanks for watching and bye.